Good morning. Good afternoon and good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. All right, I'm gonna have to give y'all the tea on um Wade Roberson uh, because the fact that they use Oprah. I guess she had to pay off the piper. And, um, okay. I see it. I see it all so, so well. Um, David Geffen, this is a mastermind for the real, um, like Michael said, the gay mafia in Hollywood. But I got, I'm, I'm in a cup today because I want to give y'all the tea about Mr. Wade Robinson. Robinson. What Ray Robinson, Robinson doesn't understand is that the version he is currently promoting, I always remembered the abuse, but I didn't see it as such, and I thought it was consensual love. It's a total impossible one. Okay? That version that he's giving y'all is totally impossible. And this is going to explain to you why. This theory is devised by real pedophiles. And Robson is unfortunately given a certain veracity by passing it off as true. And the worst that could happen to all of us will be believing that this indeed is possible. This will be the worst thing that we could possibly believe. And just because you see Oprah in front of the project, don't 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 let that validate it for you. Don't let that validate it because Oprah has her own eggs sitting and peels to uh, fry. And when you sell your soul to the devil, you have to. And he comes to collect. You, as Bob Dylan said, you got to pay. So whatever you have to do to do that, there's no loyalty involved here. This is show business. This is the money changers. This is why Steve Harvey said the way they do it out him. Okay. If applied to a 14-year-old teenager, the theory could at least look more plausible because they are teenagers' own stormy sexual issues, confusion and turmoil issues. They can imagine that they are in love when it is only curiosity and the adventurous spirit that is driving them into some dubious relationship. At their awkward age, adolescents don't often understand what they themselves want and certainly don't realize what their escapades into the luring world of adults may result in. But what y'all confused about is for a teenager, it is no longer confusion for a 23-year-old man who has grown up enough to realize that a heinous thing like anal penetration of a child, for example, cannot be consensual love and can be nothing but abuse. In fact, Thinking different at so mature an age is actually another way of supporting pedophilia, only from the opposite end of the spectrum. In other words, if a 23-year-old Wade Robinson who testified in the defense of Jackson at the 2005 trial had really been a victim, he had the option to say that he had hated it or he loved it or chose not to testify at all. But the option of defending the alleged perpetrator, thinking that there will be consensual love between a seven-year-old boy and now a grown-up man, was simply not open to him. This is crazy. Remember, he was a grown-ass man when he testified that Michael never touched him. When you are an adult, believing theories like that, that is only ridiculous. But that's actually a damn crime. Oprah, what you did was criminal, as far as I'm concerned. You validated this craziness. And the first interview, Catherine accepted and honored after Michael passed was you. And she felt as a black woman, you would understand her pain and you knew it. And she felt that you, nobody would have gave her an honest shot. Nobody would have understood her boy. She felt as a black woman that she could trust you with the information. She should have called Barbara Walters. She had more character than you and her baby finger. 
Sorry. But at a certain age, people are simply obliged to understand certain things, and one of them is the plain fact that sexual acts towards a child are ruinous and irreprehensible in their very essence and can never be accepted or condoned. Any other views on the subject are forgivable and will actually become a subtle justification of pedophilia. But from the publications of Michael Jackson haters, I gather that this is exactly what Robinson is claiming now. That at 23, when being already an adult and actually up until the right old age of 30, he regarded it as a mutual loving sexual relationship and saw nothing wrong about it. And this is why he lied under oath in the 2005 trial defending Michael. Now, seen to be taking pride in being the master of deception. Undeliverable, but in his recent deposition on December 12, 2016, he indeed refers to himself as the master of deception, deception shifting all the blame for it onto Michael's shoulders. Huh. You refer to yourself as a master of deception, correct? Answer. Here. Yes. In the writing. Now remember, Rob's Robeson shopped this book around. Nobody didn't want this. Nobody would touch it. All right, David Geffen. Do you believe that you're a good liar? Answer. I believe Michael Jackson taught me how to lie really well about the abuse that I suffered at his hand. Question. And you did consistently. You're claiming now. Lie about the abuse from when it started or when you were seven years old until May 12th. Correct? Answer. Say that one more time. Sure. You consistently lied. It's your claim now that you consistently lied about the abuse from the time you were seven until May 8th, 2012, correct? Uh, yeah, I told a story that Michael taught me to tell up until May 8th, 2012. Question. And when people pressed you on that story or asked you questions, you consistently said that Michael had not abused you, correct? Answer, correct. In short, in several disposition pages available to us and to a few remaining emails, which Robinson didn't manage to delete yet, here is the story of a painstaking way the defense got them. Robinson comes across as an exceptionally cynical guy who, according to his own words, not only always knew that he was lying, but also seemed to have been taking certain pleasure in fooling the world there, as same as he is fooling you now. Remember that the primary job of Michael's defense team at the 2005 trial was to defend Michael by challenging the witnesses for the prosecution only. Thomas Mesero said on numerous occasions that the defense could very well choose not to present their case in chief and refrain from calling any witnesses of their own. It was only due to Robinson's voluntarily to defend Jackson that Mesero decided to present the case in in the manner, the same proactive manner that the prosecution did. That was only because, okay, let me continue my journalism. So this is how we come to see this victims in the 2005 courtroom. And if we are to believe the present story, about that moment in court. He had not only had zero complications in the abuse which he allegedly suffered from the age of seven, including anal rape. Now remember, he's only seven. He had his butt busted. But he was still thinking that this was a consensual love and that's what love was all about. And though perfectly understanding the extent of what he was doing, he is now nonchalantly claiming that he is simply told lies under oath making jokes, looking relaxed and self-assured at that. There is a single grain of truth in what he is claiming now. Someone should please tell this cynic that he is no less a scumbag than the alleged perpetrator and he doesn't deserve not only 
any compensation from the estate, but even a drop of sympathy from anyone at all, as the huge moral damage was done by him and not to him. Wow. Meet and greet as a sexual grooming uh, mechanism. What strikes you most about Robeson's email to his mom is that he actually doesn't remember a thing about the events. This is understandable, as he was only seven years old when he befriended Michael. To try to recall what happened to you at the, at the same age, you will realize that it is next to nothing. The general outline of the events has, of course, been known to him since the time of the immoral, Im, immemorial, as it was told and retold to him by his relatives on hundreds of occasions. But when it comes time to recalling something, now besides those well-repeated stories that he doesn't remember, a thing now he got to ask his mom. For example, here is one of the questions from a whole list sent to Joy Robson on October 4th, 2012. Okay. Post before our friendship to USA and until we moved to USA, how many trips to USA did we make? One can only wonder how he remembers the alleged abuse in minute detail. Supposedly started at the same time, but doesn't remember the basic thing like the number of times they went to the US. Actually, there is nothing much to remember after the initial visit. There were only two more trips there. The whole story started when Robinson was five. This is when he met Michael Jackson at the meet and greet in Brisbane, Australia, after winning a competition where he imitated Michael Jackson in a dance. The prize was to meet Michael, and after that, the meet and greet, the event, Michael came and gave him a chance to perform at his concert. Now that Robson asked his mom how come they found themselves in Michael's hotel after the notable performance, she explains that she wanted to give Michael a thank you letter and following her request, the publicist arranged a meeting in Michael Jackson's hotel room. Wade Robinson to Joy Robinson on July 12th. Hey mom, question. After I performed with Michael at stage age five, what happened after that? How did we end up spending that time with him at his hotel? Joy Robinson answered the same day. I spoke to the publicist who had been coordinating with us and asked her how to get a thank you letter to Michael Jackson, and she suggested that we bring it to his hotel. Then we got there. She called us to his room and invited us to bring it to the suite. Um, okay, now that's the email they got right there. And now please compare it with Robinson's complaint and see that the transformation the above piece underwent in order to turn a simple thank you letter into something sinister and, and, and made the event uh, uh, purposefully orchestrated by others and a sexual grooming mechanism. In November 1987, when a plaintiff was five years old, he entered a dance and light competition run by Michael Jack and Productions. In conjunction with Michael's music tour in Australia, plaintiff won the competition and the prize was a meet and greet with Michael Jackson following one of his concerts. The meet and greet went well, and Michael invited a plan to, on stage to dance with him at a few more uh, concerts. I mean, at a concert a few nights later. Plaintiff and his mother also spent a few hours visiting Michael at his hotel suite the next day. Plaintiff alleges that these meet and greets were purposely orchestrated by MJJ Productions and the MJ Ventures as a sexual grooming mechanism to acquire minor sexual abuse victims for Michael. 
disguised as charitable events for minors. Y'all see that? Y'all see the difference in the story? Deep. Deep. 